Summary of The Worry Trick How Your Brain Tricks You Into Expecting the Worst and What You Can Do About It by David A. Carbonell, written and narrated by Janky Mind. Introduction The Worry Trick presents a pragmatic and insightful manual for effectively managing worry and anxiety. Infused with the principles of acceptance and commitment therapy as well as cognitive behavioral therapy, it dissects the origins of worry and furnishes practical, actionable strategies for confronting and triumphing over it. We've all experienced it, the ordinary moments of life, whether on a bus ride, sharing a family dinner, or seeking sleep, suddenly disrupted by an uninvited and unsettling thought. Picture this, the impending need to deliver a report to your supervisor tomorrow. This single thought ushers in a train of nagging inquiries. What if the report doesn't meet her expectations? Is it overly verbose? Could she find it excessive? A domino effect ensues. What if I lose my job? With that upcoming dentist appointment, losing my job is inconceivable. The specifics may differ, yet the undercurrent remains constant, worry. It's crucial to acknowledge that worry, while occasionally serving as a useful alarm for impending issues, is not the prime motivation for engaging with an audiobook on worry management. If, like many, you find worry to be a persistent issue resistant to cessation and control, despite well-intentioned advice to just stop worrying, then you're locked in a discouraging struggle. However, it becomes apparent that worry employs a deceptive strategy. Within these audio pages, you'll unravel the intricate tactics wielded by worry upon your psyche and, more importantly, how this awareness can revolutionize your perspectives and approaches. Let's embark on our journey at the genesis. What exactly entails this intriguing worry trick? Chapter 1. How Worry Deceives You Into Amplifying Concerns Consider this, what lies ahead tomorrow? On a typical weekday, perhaps you'll rouse at your customary hour, embark on your workday journey, and anticipate the possibility of traffic snarls causing a slight delay. After all, it's a scenario you've encountered before. However, the realm of possibilities encompasses more than the mundane. There's the remote chance of a serious car accident, an unlikely occurrence, yet not entirely implausible. The paradox of existence is that we navigate life with an assumed awareness of its predictability. Most days mirror one another, quietly fading into oblivion. A mind unburdened by excessive worry acknowledges this. When uncertainty arises, it often departs as fleetingly as it arrives. Yet, if you're ensnared in the clutches of unwarranted worry, perceptions alter. Future uncertainties masquerade as immediate threats in your perception. Worry thrives on such responses. It flourishes when you treat uncertainty as an imminent peril. This, in turn, catalyzes reactions that inadvertently exacerbate the situation, nurturing its growth. Reflect on this, what transpires when worry takes root? When the initial tendrils of doubt snake into your consciousness? As your brain deciphers these uncertainties as perilous, your initial instinct is to quell them. This leads to an inner dialogue, an internal wrangle wherein victory remains elusive. Consider this, worry's realm extends solely to the future and uncharted territory wherein events, however improbable, await. Yet, you lack the prescience to definitively foretell what lies ahead. The notion of disproving the non-occurrence of an event, no matter how ardent your efforts, proves arduous. In truth, within the realm of the worrisome psyche, every unsuccessful endeavor serves as an inadvertent endorsement for the impending disaster. Hence, reason and contention perpetuate the spiral. But what of diversion? The task is akin to being instructed not to ponder your inaugural childhood pet. Even if decades have passed since thoughts of Flopsy the bunny crossed your mind, I wager they're now at the forefront. Evasion, similarly, provides no refuge. This is the essence of the worry trick, 
doubt masquerading as menace, eliciting a natural inclination to halt it in its tracks. Paradoxically, the more vehement your efforts, the more adeptly the trick unfolds, fanning the flames of unease. Persistently attempting to halt an ordeal that only intensifies merits introspection. The methods necessitate re-evaluation. Instead of striving to alter the essence of worry, consider redefining your relationship with it. This notion warrants exploration. Chapter 2, Override Instincts and Cultivate a Transformed Perspective on Worry. Much like the various facets of your life, you maintain a unique rapport with your worry. This relationship, analogous to your connection with work, alcohol, or your partner, can either thrive in a state of equilibrium or spiral into dysfunction. Numerous individuals maintain a functional alliance with their worry and intermittent presence that occasionally sharpens their focus on pressing concerns or reflects an overarching sense of unease. It resembles an infrequent encounter with a neighbor or colleague, an entity that holds minor sway over existence. The real issue lies in chronic worry. This breed of apprehension is incessant, inescapable, and incapacitating. This is the juncture where your attention must shift, and your dynamic with worry must metamorphose. If this description resonates with you, it's likely that your relationship with worry falls into one of two categories. The initial scenario involves treating worry as a genuine and vital alert. This seriousness prompts efforts to stave off the perceived calamity, self-soothe fears of its occurrence, or enact measures to safeguard against its potential manifestation. While these reactions arise organically, they ultimately prove detrimental, the worry perpetuates its own credibility, bolstered by your engagement in counterproductive endeavors like arguing, evading, researching, or performing rituals to thwart it. The second potential dynamic is the onset of anxiety about the intensity of your own worrying. Recognizing the irrationality and debilitation of this incessant concern, you attempt to tackle it from a logical perspective. This typically leads to attempts at distraction or suppression, potentially manifesting in behaviors like turning to alcohol, medication, or even comfort eating. Evidently, none of these strategies bear fruit in the pursuit of a healthier interaction with worry. It's akin to employing gasoline to extinguish a fire, precisely what worry intends. The methods that seem intuitive are, regrettably, inapplicable here. Overcoming the grip of the worry trick mandates embracing the realization that your gut instincts mislead you. To surmount this ploy, you must counterintuitively oppose the inclinations that your instincts vehemently endorse. The objective isn't the eradication of worry, rather, it's the cultivation of a more tenable, functional rapport with it. The aspiration is to disarm worry of its capacity to ensnare you, thus freeing you from its grip on your life. With this understanding in place, you've taken the initial step of identifying your rapport with worry. The recognition of this paradoxical conundrum primes you for a similarly counterintuitive solution. Let's delve into these unconventional responses. Chapter 3, Deciphering the Entrance of Worries into Your Mind What stands as worry's preferred verbal duo? To provide a nudge, consider a couple of apprehensions. What if I lose my job? What if I get sick? Bravo, you've successfully unearthed the inaugural chink in worry's armor. These two words, what if, hold the key to confronting worry head-on. By harnessing this phrase, you can proactively combat worry on its own terrain. This is because worries manifest using this specific linguistic structure upon entry, affording you the opportunity to apprehend them and discern their true nature. Should the notion of directly challenging your worries trigger a bout of, shall we say, apprehension, bear in mind that our previous discourse has established the futility of evading them. To reshape your rapport with worry, a preemptive stance is your ally. Let's commence this transformative journey by dissecting worrisome sentences. Each sentence entails a what-if prelude, swiftly followed by a hypothetical scenario dubbed the catastrophe clause. Consider, 
What is the essence of the what-if prelude? Imagine contemplating, what if I'm confronted with a car accident? This thought doesn't surge at the precise moment of an accident. There's no room for conjecture, it's an ongoing reality. Now, picture yourself driving, realizing you unintentionally ran a red light. Even at this juncture, the likelihood of a car accident remains plausible, however, your mental discourse isn't dominated by what if I'm in a car accident? Instead, your instincts take the reins, striving to avert the impending mishap. The what-if prelude solely materializes when all is well. It doesn't serve the purpose of self-preservation. It doesn't operate as a guardian or thwart events. Rather, it assumes the role of a mental charade, a let's pretend. As for the catastrophe clause, it can manifest as an array of hypothetical scenarios, analogous to a game of Mad Libs. By bypassing the what-if prelude and immersing yourself in the improbable narratives encompassing the catastrophe clause, you're confronted with a continuous flow of apparently justified concerns. The crux lies in recognizing this what-if prelude. Here's a pragmatic approach, acquire a package of candies or mints where the quantity is explicitly indicated on the packaging. A 60-pack of Tic Tacs, for instance, is fitting. Whenever you detect a what-if thought infiltrating your consciousness, savor one of these Tic Tacs. This ritual serves as your method to tally your worries. Over the course of a week, your proficiency in discerning these musings will notably amplify, allowing you to observe them with detachment. The ultimate objective? Disrupting the cycle of instinctively evading or distracting yourself from worries. Liberated from the constraints of distraction, you'll intercept the what-if scenarios and unveil their true nature as an intricate game of make-believe. Chapter 4. Embrace the Art of Humoring Your Worries Envision yourself at a dinner soiree. A regrettable seating arrangement ensnares you in a corner, next to the most contentious guest at the table. Every utterance you make is met with contradiction from him. You praise the weather, he condemns it. You express fondness for basketball, he elevates football. This cycle proves draining, impeding your ability to savor the meal. What recourse remains? Engaging in argument merely satisfies his cravings, precisely what you aim to evade. Ignoring him merely intensifies his efforts. Physical altercation, while tempting, is perhaps ill-advised. Now, let's transpose this thinly-veiled metaphor onto the realm of worry, consider the approach of humoring it. Not alone, validate its viewpoints. It's not obligatory to genuinely embrace the absurdities it espouses, the objective is to foster tranquility. Picture worry as a heckler amidst your comedic performance. Integrating it into your act places the reins of control back in your grasp. Undoubtedly, this is simpler said than done, particularly if you've long been entangled in the instinctual but ultimately futile response of battling your worries. One method to initiate the practice of humoring your worries is through amplification. For instance, if you're contemplating, what if I falter during my presentation tomorrow? Append an exaggerated yes, and to the end. Yes, and my colleagues will uproariously expel me from the office, or yes, and it will earn me a prominent spot in the company newsletter. This approach acknowledges your worry while reshaping your response to it. Allow me to propose an experiment, pen down one of your worries in its most intricate, disconcerting form, keeping it concise, around 25 words. Retrieve 25 Tic Tacs from your Count Your Worries stash. Stand before a mirror and audibly recite the concern 25 times. Consume one Tic Tac during each recitation, cultivating an intentional tally. If chronic worry holds sway over you, this exercise may prove quite taxing. Monitor the fluctuation in the distress level from the first iteration to the last. You'll discern an easing of emotional intensity. 
Through the practice of humor and the act of accommodating your worries, you'll eventually unravel their deceit. The revelation becomes clear, it's not peril that lurks, but skepticism. While this technique can prove beneficial, it might not consistently yield results or prove practical, especially when worry is deeply ingrained in your daily existence. In the concluding section, you'll be introduced to three targeted exercises, which, if integrated into your routine, can gradually diminish the sway of worry over your life. Chapter 5, Three Fundamental Practices for Strengthening Resilience Against Worry Worry, much like chronic ailments, doesn't lend itself to swift remedies. Rather, it demands gradual fortification over time. Enter three techniques that can be seamlessly integrated into your daily routine, consider them akin to a regimen of vitalizing supplements or an exercise regimen. They are designed to bolster your capacity to fend off worries, a kind of immune system against their intrusion. Firstly, designate a specific time for your worries. Think of it as adopting the approach of a diligent office manager who reserves certain hours for employee interactions. Set aside a dedicated slot on your calendar to focus on your worries, literally blocking out this essential period. Recognizing that suppression only exacerbates worries, create a safe space for them to be heard. The aim is not to fix, alter, or engage in arguments with them. Instead, permit yourself the freedom to worry openly. For optimal results, engage in this process audibly while facing a mirror. While it might initially feel somewhat unconventional, witnessing and hearing yourself externalizes the process, providing a more grounded perspective. This exercise is also useful for training yourself to defer worry to more suitable moments. The second daily worry vitamin involves a straightforward breathing exercise. Although the directive to take a deep breath might seem trite, it is effective when executed correctly. The key lies in exhaling fully before inhaling deeply. Inhale gradually through your nose, hold the breath, and then exhale through your mouth. Should you find yourself neglecting proper breathing, incorporate cues from your environment like a car horn or a phone notification as prompts. Lastly, establish a daily mindfulness meditation practice. This technique, centered on passively observing thoughts, is a well-regarded approach, accompanied by numerous resources to help you embark on this journey. If you're a newcomer, here's your introduction. Find a tranquil setting, sit comfortably for a minute or two, and heighten your awareness of your thoughts and sensations. Gently focus your attention on a constant element. Often, people choose their breath as the focal point, but any unchanging feature will suffice. For instance, the hum of a fan. As your focus is intermittently disrupted by incoming thoughts, a natural occurrence, avoid wrestling with them. Instead, observe them as they arise, then gently redirect your focus back to the initial point of attention. Devote 10 minutes daily to this practice, and you'll soon notice heightened mindfulness of your thoughts, coupled with a more profound serenity in the face of worries. Strive to incorporate these three practices into your daily routine. Over time, you'll equip yourself with both techniques and inner strength to unveil the artifice of worry fostering a healthier, more balanced relationship with it. Summary All your instinctive responses to worry inadvertently exacerbate its grip. Worry isn't a foe to be battled or evaded. The persistent worry that robs you of sleep or disrupts cherished family moments is, in reality, manipulating you into interacting with it in a manner that magnifies its influence. Much like a matador enticing a bull with a vibrant cape, worry entices you with tantalizing yet ultimately hollow what-if scenarios. With this understanding, the ruse becomes transparent. By jesting with the worry, you diminish its potency. Alternatively, practice simple breathing techniques or engage in meditation exercises to reclaim mastery over your reactions. Banishing your worries is a futile endeavor. You must instead focus on nurturing a constructive, pragmatic rapport with them. True, it's effortless to become engulfed in life's tribulations. 
Nevertheless, while worries may be a facet of existence, they need not occupy a significant role. This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind. We hope you enjoyed it.